I will show now how to tune the cello, including how to use the tuning fork, how to turn the pegs when a string is right down, and how to tune with harmonics using the fine tuners. Well, how to use the tuning fork? If you look at it, it has a U-shaped part. And this is the part which vibrates and we have not to touch it. And when we touch it, it stops vibrating. Let us show it. We hold it on the little straight bit and put the button on something hard to transfer the sound. We can also hold it on our ear and listen or put it in our head. But the best spot is putting the button on the bridge because it's the spot constructed to transfer sound. I hit it against my knee and I have a round tuning fork. You can buy stronger ones which have square corners but they hurt your knee. So, it's a tiny bit flat. That's good. But now I will loosen the A string, how it can happen when there was a weather change, and show how to turn the pegs. So, That is really loose. Now you hold with your left hand the pack box and turn slowly by pushing it a bit in. You look at the string binds inside the pack box towards the side of the pack, not the other side. I also loosen a fine tuner so it sticks out a bit. You loosen it like unscrewing a screw anti-clockwise. Then you turn the peg until you come close to the A, tiny by tiny bit. And with a big movement you can snap the string. So sl slowly. Now we look what the A was and we can hum it actually. Dum. Dum. close but not yet there and we do the rest with fun tuners still too flat and we can be generous with the fine tuners and you turn clockwise in like you screw in to make it tighter and it gets sharper Tune it too sharp and look what's happened. What happens is you can hear it. So if you go wrong, at some stage you hear it, and it doesn't matter if you go wrong, you just go back again. It's too, too sharp. Too flat. There we are. That's the A. Now that we have the A, we will tune the D with harmonics. Harmonics are the sounds occurring when the string does not vibrate as a whole, but splits into even parts, like a half or a quarter. You may have noticed a similar thing with a skipping rope. You give it a flick and you have two halves turning. Well, to get the harmonics, you just lightly touch the string. Don't push it down, like not like you. But close to the bridge with a bow and there are hundreds of them and some are very interesting. I don't manipulate the harmonics but the one we need is the half harmonic, the octave. Well this harmonic is very tolerant like a whole area, not like when you push it. It gives the same pitch. And the clearer it comes, the more you're at the right spot. So if you're wrong, then you need to look until you have it very clear. And this finger we put flat on the string, like not like this, or we push too hard. Now 
we compare to the D string. We need another harmonic. We need the harmonic split into three, and we come to the same note. This harmonic is, if you play fourth position already, just where the first finger is in the fourth position, but you don't push it and have the finger steep, you have it flat. And the harmonic comes here. And if you don't play fourth position, you have the thumb in the curb, and you put the finger exactly opposite, and you touch very lightly, and it will come. Now, this is slightly too sharp. Now we turn it anti-clockwise flatter. We loosen it. A tiny bit. That's it. Well, I might show something. We can actually measure the harmonics and like the cello, the sounding length from here to here is 69 centimeters with most full-size cellos. So half is 34 and we just give it a try. 34 and a half. So, here. And now this this spot, I put my finger here and have a look if you're right. Exactly right. On the D string, we split in 3. 69 divided by 3 is 23. And it doesn't matter which 23 we take. Well, if you have a three-quarter cello, the all-over length is 66, sometimes 65. So you divide by 2 for the A string and by 3 with, with the D string. And a half-size cello is 60 to 63. You best measure it and then you, then you divide. One hint, we can hear better if you don't look at the string, but look far away or in the air. Maybe you have noticed when we switch the light off at night and music is still playing, it sounds suddenly louder. That's because our eyes take a lot of our brain power away and we don't concentrate really on the sound. Now we, we taught, uh, tune this, now we do the same relationship from this to this harmonic, and the G is a tiny bit too sharp, and we can hear it vibrating. You may have heard the tuning fork is 440 hertz, which is here, and the cello A220. Well, this hertz means vibration per second. That's quite fast. Now, this is one and a half times per second, so the G is one and a half hertz to flat. That's pretty good. And the same again. the C string you need a heavier bow and a little bit heavier finger. But apart from this, the best is we play the note fast and the harmonics go a bit like you can't play it above the fingerboard. It would sound and you don't know what the note is really. You need to play more to the bridge or in the middle between fingerboard and bridge and switch it. Okay, now once we are ready, we tune one time more through, because when we tune, the strings pull actually the bridge, and it gets again a little bit out of tune, so we go always twice through. That's good. Too flat. Better. Now, a good hint. If you have to tune in an orchestra and there's a lot of noise, like trumpets are behind you or a loud instrument or whatever, put the peg in your ear and you can hear it loud like anything. Well, last thing to practice tuning, I suggest the following exercise. And perhaps in presence of the teacher 
or you do it the day before the lesson in case it goes wrong. When the cello is in tune, then you get by purpose the D out. And you keep in mind which way you get it wrong. Like, I turn it now this way, a few times, quite generously, and then you listen. It's wrong. Now you go the opposite way to get it right again. You will notice you can't count how often you turned. You need to listen. And, and now... That's pretty good. In case you get it wrong and you go too far, you will notice it and you go back again. If you still have problems, leave a message and I try to help.